According to locals, the proper pronunciation is Upper West Side. This is one of the street art highlights up in the, er, up in the. <laughs> and two of the most famous parks in the United States. <laughs> oh. What's really good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to New York City. Today, we're in the Upper West Side of Manhattan to see if this neighborhood is worth the hype. But keep in mind, there's way too much to see, do, eat, and drink in this neighborhood. So go ahead and finesse that like button. Let's get this one to 1,000 likes or more so we can make a sequel. Now, let's explore the Upper West Side. We're at About Coffee, because Nerissa and I are all about coffee. They've got some artwork done by an artist from Colombia, which features superheroes like Green Lantern, Spider-Man, and Superman, and some of the canvases even feature neon lights. How dope is that? This morning, we just got a couple of black coffees, no cream, no sugar, you know how we do. They have some pastries here, and they do the full gamut, espresso, latte, chai, they also have tea. It's a great little spot to get some work done, or just chill and enjoy a morning coffee. Salud. When you're exploring neighborhoods in Manhattan, it's important to pay homage to those institutions like Barney Greengrass, which has been open since 1908. And I got one of the specialty sandwiches, sturgeon and Nova Scotia salmon on an onion bagel. Got some caramelized onions on there as well. It's a really bustling diner. All kinds of Jewish specialties from latkes to matzo ball soup. We got seated right away, which is nice because it's a little bit rainy today on the Upper West Side. A little piece of fish fell out of this bagel and I tasted it. Ooh, let me tell you, I already tell this is gonna be amazing. Sturgeon and Nova Scotia salmon sandwich. Mm. Wow. <laughs> mm. Manhattan is just full of classic food stops like Barney Greengrass. I went with a toasted sesame seed bagel and lox cream cheese. If you like lox and bagels, this is a nice little twist. Very simple and it's not gonna get all messy. This neighborhood is geographically named as it's literally on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. It's roughly bounded by 110th Street on the north, 59th Street on the south, the Hudson River on the west, and Central Park on the east. Another must stop on the Upper West Side of Manhattan is Levain Bakery. This was started by two home bakers back in 1995 and originally they were just selling bread, but one day they decided to put their chocolate chip walnut cookie for sale and it took off. That cookie is big enough to be a meal and it's been written about in so many different publications, so we had to get one of those plus a dark chocolate chocolate chip. And you know, it wouldn't be us without getting some coffee on the side. We're only a few blocks from the original location. They've got a couple of locations now because they've just been so successful. Gotta go big with the cookies, as they say. We're usually not the type that's eating sweets, you know, because we like to have a healthy lifestyle. But these cookies, Nerissa informs me, were used to train for triathlons. First time trying the world-famous Levain Bakery chocolate chip walnut cookie. We can get these shipped to us wherever we are in the world. Maybe London, maybe Tokyo. They gave these cookies to us nice and warm. It's got a nice crunch on the outside. It's super thick cookie, but it's not overwhelming and the sweetness is just right. To get to the Upper West Side, you can take the NYC subway, ABC, or 123 line. No, I didn't just make that up for a poetic effect. There are multiple stops on the Upper West Side, including 66th Street, Lincoln Center, 81st Street, Museum of Natural History, and 103rd Street. Hell's Kitchen and Morningside Heights are just a scooter ride away from the Upper West Side. Septuagesimo Uno means 71 in Latin. It's also the name of one of NYC's smallest parks at 0.04 acres. It's located on 71st Street, just west of Broadway. You come here to get a little slice of tranquility in the Upper West Side. For thousands of years, this area was home to New York's indigenous peoples, long before any semblance of European history and the creation of NYC. It is pizza time in the city. Made a stop to Made in New York Pizza to grab a margarita slice, a grandma slice, and five garlic knots. They do have a couple of locations here on the Upper West Side. Margarita slice from Made in New York Pizza. Mmm, margarita-y. 
As other parts of Manhattan were built up, what would become the Upper West Side remained largely undeveloped. It was mostly rural with a few estates here and there. So how did this area go from untamed wilderness to one of the wealthiest neighborhoods of NYC? This is one of the street art highlights of the Upper West Side, an original Banksy called Hammer Boy, and you can find it on 79th and Broadway. If you're feeling fancy, come to Bada Shu on the Upper West Side. This is a cream puff bar using traditional French recipes and ingredients. Today we got the box of six. We got passion fruit, honey, classic, lemon meringue, tiramisu. I guess I will try the dulce de leche. Look at that, it looks so fancy. The gold glitter on it, bon appetit. That is so delicious. The cream puff is not something we eat very often. It's so delicate, amazing. I love it. Greetings from London. I hope you're enjoying this film. We really appreciate when you hit that little red subscribe button. It helps our community to grow. We're bringing Latino and Asian voices to travel filmmaking, and we really appreciate you joining up to Gusto Nation. There were at least three main catalysts for the growth of the Upper West Side. The creation of the American Museum of Natural History, the construction of the Dakota Apartment Building, and the opening of the IRT 9th Avenue line. The American Museum of Natural History is one of the oldest institutions in all of New York, founded in 1869. It's a great way to spend a half day or full day in NYC. So the admission is $23. That is unless you're a resident of New York and you can pay what you wish. The exhibits are detailed and extensive. You can learn about animals and cultures from all around the world. They've got fossils, taxidermied animals, great displays. Also have the Hayden Planetarium. So I think we're gonna sign up to become members of this great museum. Around this time, the Upper East Side was well populated, but also becoming prohibitively expensive. So the opportunity for real estate gains was to be found in this part of New York. Edward Clark purchased a ton of land between 73rd and 74th Street from Columbus Avenue to Central Park West. The Dakota was built from 1880 to 1884. It was basically one of the catalysts for the development of the Upper West Side. The oldest remaining luxury apartment building in New York City, and over the years has been home to many famous artists, musicians, and actors. It's a national historical landmark as well as a New York City landmark. The Apthorpe is a landmark Italian Renaissance Revival apartment building on Broadway between 78th and 79th Street. Designed for William Waldorf Astor and famous celebrities who have lived here include Conan O'Brien, Jennifer Hudson, and Cyndi Lauper. It's listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The Ansonia is another landmark apartment building on the Upper West Side. It was built around the turn of the 20th century and designed by a French architect. It once had a farm on the roof, yes, with cattle, chickens, and all that good stuff. It was built as a residential hotel and was the first air-conditioned hotel in all of New York City. The Ansonia also has a couple of baseball connections. Babe Ruth once lived here, and Chicago White Sox first baseman Chuck Gandil, who was involved in the 1919 Black Sox scandal. According to some sources, one of the meetings to throw that World Series was held right here in the Ansonia. By the 1930s, most of the Upper West Side was built out and it was one of the most sought after parts of the city. However, the story of this neighborhood isn't just about its posh residents. San Juan Hill is a now erased part of the Upper West Side that was once home to many African American and Puerto Rican families. It was declared a slum and completely demolished to make way for the Lincoln Center and Amsterdam houses. That's only part of the decline that the Upper West Side went through, which started just after World War II and lasted through the 1960s. But through community action, residents were able to ban together and restore the neighborhood to its former glory. Just like Central Park, Riverside Park was designed by both Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox. The park opened around 1875 and is about four miles and just about 200 acres of green space along the Hudson River. Here you can ride your bike, take your dog to the dog run, view the beautiful waterfront and see New Jersey. It's widely considered to be Manhattan's most beautiful waterfront park. I think besides pizza, ramen is our favorite food on this channel. Tonight we're at Gin Ramen in the Upper West Side. They also have two other locations in New York, including West Harlem. This is a Michelin Bib Gourmand restaurant, nine years running from 2013 to 2022. And tonight we got a couple of nice 
hot bowls of ramen, tonkotsu, and a shoyu. Mine's chicken based, the rest is pork based. And it come with all the standard things, the flat noodles, seaweed, bamboo shoots, scallion, chashu pork, and of course that hard boiled egg. Now we've had ramen quite a few times on this channel in New York and Chicago. So we're always down for a great one. Gin is highly recommended. It's super popular, just like you'd expect. It's nice and busy. But once you order that ramen, it comes straight out. They also have rice bowls as well as soba noodles. So let's try this ramen. First, of course, you gotta try that broth. So, so good. Great soy sauce flavor. Now these noodles are house made and uh, tightly tangled. <laughs> All right, let's try some of these noodles. Those noodles are incredible. Nice and chewy. And uh, yeah, gonna get into some ramen, dude. As luck would have it, shortly after Chick Chick began construction, the pandemic struck and they had all their funding pulled. But the head chef decided that he was gonna press forward and build this Chick Chick spot right here in the Upper West Side to bring Korean inspired fried chicken and ramen. Today we ordered the half fried chicken with KSG sauce and the Chick Chick fried rice that has Chinese sausage, kimchi, a fried egg, and tobiko. These are picture perfect dishes. So if you're the type that loves to post your food on social media, Chick Chick would be a great spot to come. Located right on 89th in Amsterdam. Cannot wait to try it. Let's get into some of this Chick Chick fried rice. You can see the steam coming off of that. Mmm, wow, that is incredible fried rice. Lots of spice and flavor in there. Nice big bowl for me and the rest of the chef. Chick Chick Fried Chicken. Mmm, super crispy and juicy meat and that sauce. A little sweet, a little spicy. They said it was about a six out of 10 on the spice scale and I definitely have to agree. Not super spicy, but just enough so you really enhance those flavors. Definitely loving this so far. It's gonna be a great meal here at Chick Chick on the Upper West Side. One of the best amenities of the Upper West Side is Central Park. Now, what can you say about Central Park that hasn't already been written, said, filmed, etc.? It's arguably the most famous park on the planet. And although it looks natural, it's all man-made, planned out by two of the most legendary park designers of all time. Amsterdam Ale House is on 76th in Amsterdam. We are here to drink some beers, hang out, watch the people go by, and we brought Rowdy along too. I got a fifth hammer sour, and Louis got a Bel Air sour. Cheers! Well, it's delicious. It's nice and pink. This is the Bel Air sour brewed over in Brooklyn. Got a nice tropical fruit flavor with a cool, crisp finish. Great beer. The Upper West Side of Manhattan is one of NYC's best neighborhoods. It's got amazing cultural institutions, historic landmark apartment buildings, and two of the most famous parks in the United States. Peace and blessings. Uh -huh.